So uh, everything I say here is for informational purposes only and should not be relied upon or considered uh, legal tax or accounting advice. You should always consult with a, with a licensed professional before entering into any financial transaction. All right, this is the moment you all been waiting for. Let's dive in. What is the Corporate Transparency Act? It is going to create a new federal database specifically targeting us, entrepreneurs, small business owners, and investors. Why do they do this? They always have they always have some kind of excuse that has to do with national, national security. This They specifically talk about money laundering, terrorism, and drug trafficking and their explanation for the law. But we know what's going on, don't we? We know the government is just going after us because they think that we aren't paying enough in taxes. And, you know, we've all been following the news the last year or so. We've been talking about those 85,000 new IRS agents. You know, we remember that. Uh, we may not know that they recently added billions to the IRS budget. Remember that? And it has to do, a lot of it has to do with new AI capabilities and upgrades of the IRS's digital capabilities. But they couldn't make it work efficiently like they want to because they were missing a couple of things. Number one, they were missing an all-encompassing database to gather all of our info. And they needed a law with teeth to it to compel us to give up our personal and our corporate anonymity. And of course, what happens when you do that? Well, it's, it allows the government to squeeze us to pay more to them. And that's what they want. We don't want that. But the law that ties it all together is the Corporate Transparency Act. Uh, it's gonna be under the Department of Treasury. Interesting though, that the, the department that is responsible for enforcing it is the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. And that's like that's like taking out a shotgun, but to double barrel shotgun right away. I mean they're not they're just showing everybody they're not fooling around. Okay. And of course, there's always exemptions. And I think you're gonna not be surprised who the, who gets the exemptions. The big fish, Fortune 500 companies are exempt. Any financial institution is exempt. And I thought it's funny they have a separate separate uh, category here. Defense contractors are, of course, exempt. And W-2 employees. I don't think it's because they belong in this group. I think it's just because they, they realize they can't squeeze W-2 employees much, much more than they already are. So uh, they're exempt. So if, if a business has $5 million or more in gross receipts annually, if it has at least 20 full-time U.S.-based employees, then it is exempt. Like I said, big companies are exempt. And there's a reason why, because they have lobbyists, they have money and they can buy off the politicians. And that's why they're sitting pretty, but we're not because they're going after the low hanging fruit and that's us. So let's talk about who has to register. And I think you're already realizing it's going to be us, but let's get into specifics here about this. So any LLC, any S corp, any C corp, any LLP, any LLLP or sole proprietorships. They have to register if they're making less than $5 million a year in gross receipts and they have less than 20 full-time US-based employees. It also requires anyone who owns at least 25% in any kind of an entity to register with the Corporate Transparency Act. And they have this really nebulous language here that talks about if you exercise significant control or influence on a business, you're forced to register as well. I always wonder, you know, how do you define significant control or influence on a business? Uh, so if they have significant control or influence, they have to register. And it also mentions applicants, but there's no clear understanding yet what that even means. I mean, it's kind of like, okay, applicant for a job. I mean, what does that mean? But they haven't, they haven't uh, clarified that yet. But the bottom line is that they're going to gather a staggering amount of information that we're being forced to close. Okay. So we must provide those of us who are registering, we must provide, you know, our driver's license numbers, our passport numbers. We have to provide them with a scanned photo of all of our IDs. 
we had to provide our residential address, our date of birth, social security number, emails, phone numbers, any other identification cards that we have, we have to disclose. And for the companies, we have to provide any identif identifying information uh, about the company and applicants. Again, we don't know what the applicants are, but the legal name of the company, any trademarks, any copyrights, any DPAs, any business registrations, tax ID numbers, any identifying information on the beneficial owners of, uh, and the company itself, they're all required. We have all these businesses are required to get a new FinCEN number. Now, whenever we go down to open up a bank account, for example, or you know a stock account, Fidelity, Charles Schwab, something like that, right now we need to have a corporate resolution, bring that to the to the bank, and also an EI, you know, give them our EI, EIN number. Starting next year, we're going to also have to provide a FinCEN number. Anybody in the Corporate Transparency Act has to get a new number and it has to we have to have that to either open an account or maintain an existing account so but if uh, 2024 they're going to tell you that you're going to get a FinCEN number they're going to close your accounts down and by doing this you can see all this amount all this information is going to be in one database now it's not going to be spread out between the federal government not really coordinated they're going to be able to coordinate and analyze everything about you, all your finances, your assets, with just a simple push of a button. And all that AI, IRS AI they put spent all those billions of dollars on, well, that's going to analyze your info and decide if you are, quote unquote, suspect. They're tasking the financial institutions to be their eyes and ears. So if these banks, they see any suspicious activity whatsoever, then What's going to happen? Well, they're going to lock down the account, call the FBI, and an investigation is going to be started. Crazy, huh? Once, and you know how the feds are. They start something like that. They're going to go through your business with a fine-tooth comb. And even if you think you're fine, well, if they find anything wrong, they're going to seize the business, seize your accounts, seize your personal property. You're going to be on the street. And there's, you know, you can't go up against the feds. They have unlimited resources. We don't. And it's it's not a, it's not a pretty thing. And oh, by the way, if they ever see something, good luck getting it back. Even if you're honest as a day long and you did nothing wrong, only 1% of funds and assets that are seized by the federal government are ever returned to the rightful owner. This is something I didn't know until recently. Did you know that banks get 35 to 40 percent of the accounts that they freeze, whatever is in there, they get a 35 percent to 40 percent cut of what that is? Crazy, huh? So here's the danger. I've heard a lot of people I've spoken with about CTA. Their first response is, well, you know, Don, I operate within the law. I'm not cutting corners. I do everything by the book. So I'm not worried. Well, I've been doing business since I was in my mid twenties, the various businesses and nobody is a hundred percent clean. No matter how hard you try, there's always something that can bite you in the butt. One oversight, one missing disclosure, one mistake on a reporting form. If you had ever had one undocumented employee that maybe you didn't know about, it turned out it was undocumented. You didn't know any better. And then it gives them the justification to shut it all down. Okay. I was investigated by the state of Florida for a completely bogus complaint from a disgruntled homeowner in a short sale. I did nothing wrong. I felt very good. And my attorney told me, Don, it's not the original complaint that gets you. It's when they start going through everything and that's what you got to worry about. So I just had a hint of that. That wasn't the feds. That was just, you know, a licensing agency here in Florida. Um, they're requiring you to constantly update your information with the federal database. So if you have a change of personal address, you got to report to the federal government. We've been, we, you know, we know that you have to, you know, change your driver's license to reflect your new address when you move. But I mean, come on, right? I mean, I, I recently, I moved in, took me over a little a year for me to update my, my uh, driver's license. Any kind of change of ownership that happens in your company, you have to report. Here's the, here's the kicker. If you don't comply, it is considered a criminal offense. 
think about that. Boy, if I, I didn't change my driver's license for like 13 months, if, if this was, if CTA was, was, uh, in power, then that'd be a criminal offense. They could, they can find you $500 minimum daily up to 1500 maximum daily up to $10,000 max fine per violation. And as much as two years in prison. Crazy, huh? Well, we know that big corporations are the ones that really control things now, unfortunately, and they, they have enormous influence. And, you know, I was just sitting here thinking about this, you know, big pharma hates anything that takes away from getting us to swallow the pills and all the stuff they're providing. A lot of us don't agree with it. And we've gone to holistic alternative medicine, things like that, which big pharma hates, right? Imagine how this could be used in a negative way, putting pressure on them to, to look at natural and alternative holistic medicine uh, producers, suppliers, things like that. And they could put them out of business. That's just one example. I mean, sorry if I feel like I'm, you know, uh, crying wolf here, but there's just been too many examples of federal overreach in the years that, I mean, I've just lost a lot of trust in what they do. I just think it's fascinating that they are targeting just us, not the fortune 500 companies, not W2 employees, you know, defense, so on and so forth. They're going after us, small businesses and investors. They exempted the ultra rich, but they're going after us. We're the smaller fish. And oh, by the way, if you're using any kind of shell companies or anonymous Wyoming, Delaware, Nevada, LLCs, like a lot of investors do, holding companies, they're going down. They're going down, down, unfortunately. Well, I mean, I don't, I'm not trying to create a bleak picture here, but I'm just telling you, I'm just being realistic about what's coming. All right. So I have a small question, a very important question for everybody here. Why would you voluntarily comply? with this outrageously horrible law if there was a legal way to avoid it? What if I told you there was a loophole? Our clients run their businesses, protect their assets, protect their anonymity, both personal and corporate. They get major tax reductions. They shield their assets from lawsuits. And oh, by the way, we're all protected from the Corporate Transparency Act because we have a 100% legal structure and strategy that exempts you, all of us who have this structure from complying with the Corporate Transparency Act. Now, if you're freaking out about this or you're worried about it, just imagine how wonderful it would be to operate all your businesses without having to register with CTA. Imagine not having to get a FinCEN number for heaven's sake. Imagine not being on the Fed's radar at all. All you'd have to do is just file a tax return once a year and that's it so are you ready to learn how because i'm i'm chomping at the bit to teach you how to do this okay so before i do that let's just review really quickly what corporate entities are required to register llc's s corp c corps llps llps and sole proprietorships and of course anybody that has a 25 percent or more interest or controlling interest in any company they're all required to register even trusts, some trusts are required to register with the Secretary of State of any state. One of the big examples they like to use is the Massachusetts Business Trust, because, um, but that that is also not exempt because it is required to register with the Secretary of State in Massachusetts. So, as I've done my business career, and I've been very successful. One of the guiding principles that I, I try to live by and run my business by is Occam's razor. Have you ever heard of that? You know, the, the idea is that the simplest solution is usually the best or the most obvious reason is the one that's most likely to be true. So we have existing businesses. Logically, the simplest solution is just change the business entity that we <laughs> that runs the business to one that's not required to register with the Corporate Transparency Act, right? If we have a successful business, it's doing fine on its own, and we can keep running that, that business, same strategies, same assets, same income, but all we need to do is just change the entity to one that's not required to register, right? That seems to be pretty, pretty uh, self-evident. The good news is that our contract law business trust and spendthrift trust, they are not required to register with the Corporate Transparency Act. 
Again, our contract law, business trust, and spendthrift trusts are not required to register with CTA. And guys, you run your business exactly as you would with your LLC, S Corp, C Corp. But the only difference is that you run it inside the business trust instead of those entities. That's it. Our business trust can have unlimited DBAs and bank accounts under its umbrella. I'm getting a business trust here shortly because I'm, I'm letting go of my S Corp. I have a real estate investing business that I run that runs through my S Corp. I have consulting that I do. I have courses I sell. I have uh, I do some affiliate marketing. All those streams of income currently are going to my S Corp. Well, all we're going to do is just put them through my my business trust now under its umbrella. Like I said, unlimited DBAs, unlimited bank accounts, and one huge advantage that we have over. LLCs, S Corps, and C Corps is that our business trust has a spendthrift provision, which means that the income that comes in is protected from lawsuit 100%. I mean, anybody can sue anybody in this country, but it's not going to go anywhere because of spendthrift provision. So your income stream is protected. Like I said, all that stuff, unlimited database, uh, DBAs, bank accounts, you only need the one EIN number for the business trust, no matter how many projects and bank accounts and DBAs you're running under it, and it's only one tax return. The business trust is a pass-through entity. It runs, it, it operates uh, very similarly to what the S Corp is. You run your, you run, you run your business. Revenue comes in. You pay expenses. You take your deductions. Whatever's left over is the net income. It passes down to you personally. That's what an S Corp is. Okay. In this case, the uh, the business trust will pass, you know, the net income will pass down preferably to your spendthrift trust. Some of our clients use a charitable trust for that purpose. And of course, worst case scenario, which is the absolute worst choice, is to go down to you personally because it's all taxable in a bad way. Your spendthrift trust is also 100%, I mean, 100% lawsuit proof asset protected. That's where you that's where you keep most of your assets and all the passive income that come, that you earn comes into your spendthrift trust also not required to register with the Corporate Transparency Act. So in short, by doing this, besides getting you completely off the federal rate, of, you also get major tax reduction and you get your anonymity. And here's a big thing too. Neither trust is required to register with any state. Remember what I said about the Massachusetts Business Trust? It, it, it has to comply with CTA because it's re, it has to re, uh, register with the Massachusetts uh, State uh, Department of State. Our trust or not, you know, my uh, my S Corp is registered in the state of Florida. If you go on sunbusiness.org, you can find it very easily. But if you happen to know the name of my trust, which you don't, because I keep it, I keep it, you know, I keep it uh, uh, under wraps because I want my anonymity. You would never find it. It's not registered. And each trust is only required to only get an EI number, not a FinCEN. So in summary, you get the following. You get freedom from the Corporate Transparency Act. You get the full anonymity you're looking for. You get 100% lawsuit-proof asset protection, not just for your assets, but also for your income streams and, and major tax savings. So before we get to the question and answer, I want to repeat a question I asked earlier in the presentation. Why in the world... Would you voluntarily comply with the Corporate Transparency Act if there was a legal way to avoid it? 